So write your own vector class. So this is the topic and so many interviewers ask this question because this is the best way to know like how far you can go with writing or like designing something. So when we used to give the interview, the time, mostly they were asking like write your own string class. But now I know uh, they will uh, ask you to write, write your own unique pointer, write your own vector, like they will ask you Q and all that. So I thought, okay, it's a good idea to start this series. So yeah, this is going to be the first video of write your own container. So if they are asking you write your own container, it means that they expect you to know that container. So if you are expected to write uh, my vector, like let's say you'll call this my vector, then in that case, you know what the vector is. So if you're new to this channel and new to this STL world and all that, then you should know what is vector. So if you don't know, please consider watching my previous videos. You'll get the link here somewhere. And I have a detailed video like how STD vector internally works, like how it grows and shrink and stuff like that. So as I said, this is going to be the first video. So let's start this. So uh, what is vector? A vector is a growable array. Let me clear one thing. There is no growable array internally in C or C++, meaning they use the old traditional array, which is like, if you give the size, that's it. You cannot modify that. But they use in a way that it, it give you the feel that it is growable. So under the hood, it is the same C style array, which you cannot change once you create it. Okay, let's see how you will make it growable. So obviously you will create a template class. You can see this is my vector. And the data is going to be the template data, meaning you can choose whatever you want. And we need two things. So for now, as this is going to be the, a simple video, because they won't expect you to start writing iterator level a class. Okay. So, you know, in vector, you have a size and a capacity. Okay. So size is like how many elements are already there in this vector and capacity is like how many elements you can at max hold. So we'll maintain those two things into these variables and this is a default constructor where you will say data is null and size is zero and capacity is zero and destructor will just simply delete the data. I mean the array. So in vector, we mostly use pushback. So I have given that example. The beauty of this pushback is this guy. It will check if the size like current size is equal to the capacity, meaning we have already maxed out. We cannot push any data into the array because it is already maxed out, then what you will do, you will resize it. Meaning we will go to this function. We'll say, okay, this is the new capacity. So yeah, how you will decide what capacity it should have now is a very simple. You just double the current capacity. So like one to two, two to four, four to eight. Okay. So that's the general uh, way of increasing it. So you will call the resize function. And let's look at the resize function. You'll get the new capacity. You'll create dynamic array. So this is the point here. We are creating a dynamic array under the hood of the same type. Now this array is empty for now. What you will do, you will fill this array, new data, new, new data array with the old data array. Okay, you can see this from zero to current size. You will just simply copy that. And then you'll delete the old array and replace the old array data with new data. Okay. And the capacity would be new capacity. That's it. So you can see that we are not having any magical array. It's the same C style array. So it's just, you are creating a new array and copying the old data. And now you are pointing that new array as the current array. Okay. So this is how we internally make this vector growable. So yeah, we, we were at pushback. You resize it because it was already maxed out. So you decided to resize. Once you have done the resizing part, you will push that value, whatever value you took to push into the array like this. That's it. And pop back would do this. Just decrement the size. That's it. You won't use that element anymore. And these are just very simple function. If array is empty or not, what is the capacity? What is the size? And we have these two uh, overloads. So, you know, vector we use with this 
rectangle brackets, right? So we have these functions. Let's quickly look at the demo part. We created our own vector. So you have to give this also to them, okay? So pushing the values from one to five will push. I'll show you the uh, results. So we'll push from one to five and then size and capacity will print what the size and capacity becomes after pushing five elements into this growable array or my vector. And then we'll just simply print all those elements and pop one element out of the array and just see like what is the size and the capacity is. So let me compile this. No problem. If I'll run this, see one, two, three, four, five were pushed and the size is obviously five because we have five elements in this, but capacity is now eight. So when you're inserting one, it will become one. When you're going to insert two, it, the size will and capacity will become two. When you're going to insert three, the capacity will become four. When you're going to insert four, you will not resize. But when you're going to insert five, in that case, your capacity was already maxed out. This time you will make it eight because four multiplied by two will be eight. So that's why we see this eight here. Simple, right? So I think uh, we are done. Just uh, this thing is left. So I have shown two overloaded functions here. One is constant. Don't get confused. This is constant function. So if you have a constant object in that case, it will call this, not this, because it has to maintain the data integrity, right? Like no one should be allowed to change the data. So that's why it is a read part, right? So in, 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 in read part, you should not be allowed to do the write and stuff. So if your object is constant, then it should call this constant flavor of this overloaded operator. So uh, that's it guys. One piece of advice, just don't look at these programs and just close the laptop. No, write your own. So you have seen like, what is the structure, right? So do one thing, open your editor, start writing your own my vector class. So you will face that. Okay. Oh yeah. I don't know uh, what, what is the correct way to do this? You will learn when you will actually do it. So watching video is like maybe 40%, maybe 30, 40% because you'll be able to still write something at front of your interviewer, or this will clear out your, some of the doubts. But when you start writing, you'll face that. Okay. Oh my God. I didn't pay attention to that point. So yeah, do practice. It will help you a lot. So yeah. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye. Take care.